Okay, let's crack out our H-Bridge. In your kit, you'll have received this handy dandy little circuit board, which is a dead easy to use H-Bridge. Uh, you can actually use it for stepper motors, which we will learn about in the next module, the robotic drives and physics module. But you can also use it to control two DC motors. How about that? So we'll use it to control the two DC drive motors on your robot kit. Now the nice thing about an H-Bridge is that you can easily use PWM. So not only can you reverse the motor by just changing the signals you send to it, you can also vary the speed of the motors. Also, this little board has a built-in voltage regulator as well. So this means you can plug your six volt pack straight into this board. So you get direct power to your power hungry DC motors, but also can extract regulated five volts off of the board to power either your PIC or Arduino, like we're going to do when we actually mount the Arduino on your mobile robot. Now, the Arduino is not supposed to run on six volts, though for the record, I know many people have successfully done this. I really do not recommend it though. <laughs> There's a very good chance that you will fry your Arduino, and that's bad. Okay, so in the downloads section, you will find a handy dandy reference sheet for the H-Bridge. If you provided your own parts, yours may be slightly different than this one. The connections should all be the same, but they might have connections uh, in, a, in a different place. If you look very carefully, the connections are written in the silk screen on the board itself. It's a very simple board to use. Uh, power from your battery comes into this connector block right here. Uh, in your robot kit, you'll have received this fancy dancy screwdriver, which is actually two screwdrivers in one. Uh, just pull out the shaft like this, and you'll see you have a slot screwdriver and a Phillips end. So you may have to select the slot end uh, depending on the board you got, but the boards from Jetpack, the Jetpack Academy kits, uh, you can use either screwdriver end. I would recommend uh, using the battery pack that came with the robot kit. So you just loosen off the screw, insert your battery pack wire, and then tighten the screw down onto the bare wire. So connect the negative and positive in this way, but we'll, uh, we'll need a connection to ground for our Arduino as well. So there's a bunch of ways you can do this. You can uh, wrap a second wire, a second jumper wire around the battery's uh, negative wire and put the two into the screw down connector. Or you can see what I did here. I used the header on the Arduino like a breadboard. And I put the negative battery connection straight into one of the ground connections on the Arduino. Now, because the Arduino has multiple ground connections, I then just jumpered from another ground connection here to the ground connection on the H-Bridge board, voila. The plus five volt connection should be this one here. That's the plus five volts that we can use to power the Arduino. Uh, we're not going to bother with that yet because we're just using the USB power to, from your computer to power the Arduino anyway. Uh, you can provide power as high as 35 volts. However, if your supply power is anything higher than 12 volts, you want to remove this jumper right here. This makes a connection for the voltage regulator, which can only handle up to 12 volts. So obviously, disabling the voltage regulator means you can't power your microcontroller through the five volt output. So this header here has both jumpers and connections. You should have two jumpers on the enable A and enable B lines on the ends of the header. Go ahead and pull those jumpers off, but save them. You will need them, whoops, <laughs> I just sent, one, sent mine flying. Um, save them, 
you will need them for the robotic drives module. Basically, because this board can operate stepper motors as well, stepper motors actually require continual power. So these jumpers keep continual power applied to the motors. In our case, we're going to remove the jumpers and turn the motors on and off by controlling this line with a high or a low. Or we'll turn it on and off very rapidly using PWM. So next, we're going to hook up your motor wires either to output A, uh, output two, sorry, or output three. I'll hook it up to output two. Just keep in mind which output you're using because you'll have to use the appropriate uh, control pins. Uh, these three control pins control output two, these three control output three. You'll also need to solder wires onto your robot drive motor or you can just use your DC motor from the analog kit if you want, that's okay. However, you are going to have to solder wires onto your robot drive motors eventually, so might as well do it now. I found this quite difficult, uh, the soldering quite difficult to do, and basically you really need to clean these solder loops. Uh, clean them really, really good. Even scrape the surface with a knife or a screwdriver to get any oils or oxides off of the copper. The way the H-bridge works is super simple. Uh, these connections here control the motors and in your kit you should have some female to male jumpers called DuPont jumpers and uh, as DuPont was the the company that made this style of connector. Uh, so you just plug that to the board header and you can connect it to your Arduino or if you want, or your breadboard, if you want to go that route. Um, it's hard to read, but the silk screen says ENA for enable A, then IN one through four, which is inputs one through four, then ENB for enable B. Output two is output A. Output three is output B. The H bridge is controlled digitally by these inputs. Uh, IN1 and 2 control output A. Basically a high on IN1 and a low on IN2 will throw the digital switches in the H bridge to turn the motor one direction. Reversing the motor is accomplished by simply putting a low on IN1 and a high on IN2. If both are high or low, then the motor doesn't turn at all because if you'll recall from H bridges, that connects both sides of the motor to either positive or negative. So both sides of the motor are connected together in effect. So with the digital switches uh, setting set for motor direction, you now have to apply power to the motor. And this is done with the enable line. A high sends power to the motor, a low turns off the power. So now if you can picture it, we can turn that line on and off really fast using PWM, controlling the speed of the motor, and then using the other two lines, we can control the direction of the motor. For now, I'll just control these lines with highs or lows. I'll connect ENA up to line, uh, up to digital output 13, which also conveniently has the onboard LED on the Arduino so we can see when the motor's enabled and I'll connect IN1 to pin 12 and IN2 to pin 11. So all we have to do is set up those pins as outputs, and what I'll do here, just to demonstrate what's going on, I'll send a high on IN1 and a low on IN2. And then I'll send a high on the enable line for one second. I'll then turn it off for half a second, put a low on IN1 and a high on IN2, thus reversing the motor. Notice it's backwards. And then turn on the enable line high again, then wait for another second. I'll then turn the enable line low, wait a half a second, 
and loop back to the beginning and do it all over again. Now you can put the wheel on your motor if you want. Uh, they just press fit on, just line up the ah, slotted hole in the wheel, but the motor is going to want to you know, drive all over the place on you. So it's easier to just leave the wheel off and put the motor down on its side like this. Power up the H-Bridge with the battery pack and you should have your motor continually changing direction and running for one second in either direction. Now, obviously you can do all of this with just switches and wires, but I wanted you to see uh, computer control and just how easy the H-Bridge is to use. If you use the second motor port, then it's the exact same process, only you're using IN3 and 4 and enable B to control this second port. Make sure your motor wires are hooked up the same way on both motors so that the motors turn in the same direction. Otherwise, when we go to build and run your mobile robot, one motor will run backwards and the other forwards. So keep this set up and keep this sketch. Uh, we're going to use it all in the next lesson.